All right, we're gonna get straight to it today. Not gonna do a long intro. Basically, this video, as the title says, is about uh, dyeing slash staining the fretboard of my Les Paul. This is the guitar in question. It is my gold top. Um, I love this guitar. It is a custom shop Les Paul from 2018. It was a made to measure. Uh, it's basically the best Les Paul I've ever played. It's uh, just a great guitar. But uh, the one thing I don't like about it, and I've never liked about it, is the fretboard. It's always a little too light and streaky to me. Um, so I'm hoping I can rectify that today. Otherwise, the guitar is basically perfect in my eyes. Now I understand a lot of people are going to disagree with me and really think this is dumb. Totally fine. You're, you know, of course, entitled to your opinions. But uh, my guitar, my video, that's what I want to do. I might get some outdoor shots to kind of show you guys what the fretboard looks like in the sun. But here's what it looks like under kind of more indoor lighting. Show it a bit closer up. Overall, I think it's a okay looking fretboard, but um, it's just very streaky and pretty light colored. I just definitely prefer a darker colored fretboard, especially on a beautiful gold top like this. So it's uh, obviously purely a personal thing. But uh, that's what we're here to try and rectify. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, I've got a, another Les Paul. This is an Epiphone Les Paul that I'm kind of using as a test dummy for this video. I'm doing a bunch of tests. So I'm going to grab the camera, show you guys a close-up of kind of what I've done so far. Figure out the plan of attack and uh, get going. All right, let's get to it. Quick overview of the tools I'll be using for this. You've got India ink. This is Higgins branded non-waterproof black ink. This is exactly what Stumac sells on their website for this purpose. I've got a refillable paint pen. This is what I use to apply the India ink to be a bit more careful and strategic to be able to brush it on. I've got this uh, ebony stain marker from Minwax. This is very commonly recommended online. Got a foam applicator. Should I um, think this is going to help. I haven't tried it yet. And then, of course, for prep, I've got sandpaper. This is 400 grit. And then I've got steel wool. This is the finest um, grade of steel wool. Gloves, that's essential for this sort of thing. What else do I have? More prep stuff. This is naphtha to be able to clean the fretboard and really make sure there's no uh, moisture or anything inside of the fretboard, and then I've got a magic eraser as well in case I need some extra help getting some of the stain off of the in laser binding, TBD on that. So there you go, that's kind of what I'm going to be using for this. Now obviously you see I've got a guitar here and it's got varying shades of light brown to nearly black on it. This is from some testing I did prior to deciding to do this video, obviously I want to make sure things were semi figured out uh, before I risked doing it to my prize Les Paul. So I'm gonna show a close up of kind of what's what here, but before I do that, I've got on this fret here and this one here, uh, the ebony um, stain pen that's been sitting there drying for the past nearly three days. So I'm gonna go ahead and buff that off and then show close up so we can all see together how they compare next to the indie ink in various combinations therein. So let me do that real quick. All right, let's do a quick review of what was done on the Epiphone Les Paul and decide what we want to do on the Gibson. So let's go ahead and check it out. We'll start over here. This is the raw right here in the center of your screen. This is the raw color of the wood. Ignore all of these. Raw, this right here is India ink. And so that was just a couple layers of India ink added on there and then removed. And this is what I just buffed. This is the Minwax Ebony Pen, which was uh, left on there for about three days to soak in. You'll notice that it really did not soak in evenly. It's darker here, quite a bit lighter here. Not sure why that is. Um, whereas this is much more uniform. And uh, first impressions, this looks a lot more like the Brazilian Rosewood on my vintage Les Paul Jr. Um, much more than this does. And then again, reference, this is the, sorry, this is the raw. And then this one just 
because I pointed to it. This was actually the raw, but a, um, a little bit of F1 oil added. So if you're not familiar with that product, that's F1 oil. And um, this is just kind of a general fretboard conditioner. And it actually worked pretty well and doesn't look a million miles away from this stain uh, from the Ebony Minwax pen. Whereas this obviously looks very different than this. Then going over here, I'll kind of go in a different light so you can hopefully see a little bit more. So this is again, the raw wood. This is India ink. And then this was a test where I did India ink, which looked exactly like this here. And then I added on the Minwax Ebony pen to kind of see what it would look like if they were stacked. And for some reason it came out lighter than the Indie ink on its own, which is a little strange. So with that, I think the plan of attack is to move forward with the India ink. I think that's my favorite of the bunch. And uh, yeah, so we'll start with doing prep on the Gibson. So we'll take the strings off and then uh, start working on sanding and prepping the fretboard. All right, let's take a look at the fretboard up close. You can see it's pretty streaky. It's got some tooling marks in it too. Um, the person that did the refret on this was stainless. They were not the most careful in the world. So we'll try and rectify that a little bit today as well. Uh, actually, let me grab the camera and show you guys a close up so you can see the before a little bit better. All right, so here's what the fretboard looks like currently. Very streaky. Some might like that. I personally do not. And fairly light. I'll try and get it in a little bit of a different light so you can see it from the side. All right, let's get to sanding. Before we start sanding, I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the pickups since I'm gonna be using steel wool for part of it. And uh, you don't wanna get that near pickups, especially if uh, you have them open like I do. So let's go ahead and do that now. I think I'm gonna start with the 400 grit and then maybe end with the steel wool. Honestly, I'm not sure which is the best way to go about this. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to start with the 400 grit. Now, one thing I do want to be careful about is not sanding the inlays. I'm trying to think of a good way to avoid that. And one idea I had was to use clear tape, see if I have any, and then put it over and then maybe use an X-Acto knife to cut around it. I'm honestly not sure how well that would work. Here's kind of the tape I was thinking. Now we'll see when I sand if it lifts off or not, but we'll try it on these first three. And I think I want to cover the frets as well. So I think what I'm going to do is grab this razor blade and then just kind of do that and then use that as kind of a flat edge. So I'll try that. Yeah, it's definitely better. Now the real trick is going to be getting right along the frets. All right, there we have it. First layer, first wave of sanding done. So let's go and take a shop towel and just wipe all these down and see what we're working with. Next up, we have the steel wool. So I'm gonna, again, just kind of tape over a mask over the frets. I'm probably gonna have to repolish these. They're stainless steel, so they're already polished, but just to get out any little nicks or anything um, or little scratches that might have come from sanding, even though I did do tape over the frets. Sometimes they get a little bit on the side, it looked like. 
no big deal. I will polish them at a later stage. For now, let's just go ahead and get these frets masked off a little bit and then do the steel wool. All right, steel wool is done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum all of this disgusting metal particles and uh, then we can move on to the next step. We'll start with the uh, naphtha next and really clean the board out. And then uh, we can finally start using some of the India ink. Basically, I'm just gonna do this until it's not picking up any brown on the cloth. And then I'll know it's basically as clean as it'll get. And if you're wondering, this stuff is actually uh, nitro safe. So you can actually use it to clean your guitar, which I have done many times before in the past and it works really well. So now this fretboard is as dry and as free of oils as it can possibly be, which means we are good to go for the next step, which is of course, breaking out the India ink. So let's go ahead and get that set up. All right, so I've got the India ink here. I'm gonna put it in this tube and then screw this in to this right here. So I'm gonna put gloves on real quick and then we'll get going. I don't imagine we'll need much. So let's try that. So we should be good to go now. I think you just push this right here. See what happens. There we go. And this is where the fun begins. Uh, before I get going, actually, I'm going to put this here, get some shop towels ready to go so I can quickly wipe up anything that needs to be wiped up. Put one there, put one here. And yeah, the plan is basically to try and avoid the binding as much as possible, but I can always wipe it if I do get on the binding. And the inlays still have the clear tape over them, so I think I'll be good to just go over the inlays. And um, yeah, let's uh, give it a go. How precise I need to be with this, I'm not really sure yet. In fact, I think I might need some more ink here. We're gonna figure it out as we go. You can already tell the wood is taking the ink differently on this versus the Epiphone. I do fully expect to get some ink on the binding, but I'm also fairly certain that'll be easy to rectify. Uh, I do have this not very level, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and level the guitar out a little bit there. It's probably slightly out of focus now, so let me fix that. Looks pretty good, we'll go ahead and move on. Doesn't seem to want to stick to the binding, which is good. I mean, I think it definitely will, but it doesn't want to. See, this uh, first one is already mostly dried. It's kind of interesting. All right, there we go. The first coat of Indie ink is on the fretboard. Very minor little spillovers here and there on the binding, but honestly, uh, that was inevitable. I think if I were to do this over again, I would get a better brush or something that has a more of a fine tip to be a bit more accurate, but overall, I think pretty good. And uh, 
yeah, it should be really easy to clean that up later with uh, various methods. So from here, we'll just let it dry overnight and then uh, come back tomorrow and see what we've got. All right, so it's been nearly 24 hours drying on the fretboard here. You can see it's kind of dried into a kind of like a matte black color, I'd say. You can still see some of the grain below it. But I know from experience with the Epiphone that it will kind of buff more into a shine that you'd expect on a natural fretboard, which is partly why I opted to move forward with this. But yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks like the coverage is fairly even for the most part. Couple small little areas. It looked like it didn't uh, didn't work perfectly. Let me see if I can find one. Kind of right here, because it didn't really stick there for some reason. That's about it. Maybe one more over here, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. So next step, I'm going to take a damp rag and rub rub it up and down the fretboard here to kind of get off any of the excess per the Stumac instructions. So I've got a couple different options here. I think what I'm gonna do is utilize these little cotton um, rounds. I think this could work to uh, get slightly damp, and then I'm just gonna rub up and down and get off the excess pigment. I expect a good amount to come off because this is non-waterproof. Really, I wanna get that top layer off and then stack on another layer on top. So let's give this a go. I did not try this with the Epiphone, so this will be new. We'll see what happens. I get two together and squish them together. So now I've got two damp cloths. And we'll go ahead and try it. see some coming off but not all of it honestly less came off than I was expecting kind of see here so I'm gonna do another pass on the back of this and I'll get a little bit closer to the frets all right so now I'm gonna take a clean one run it over and we'll see where we're at all right you'll see that Barely any came off of that. So that's pretty good. It's uh, honestly better than I was expecting. So now I got to decide if I want to do another layer of the black or if I kind of leave it as is. It actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to take a closer look and then uh, clue you in on what I decide. All right. So I think it looks pretty good overall, but... I'm not totally certain it's really soaked in. So I'm actually gonna do another pass with the damp cloth here and see what comes up from that. And then I will do another layer on top of that. So let's go ahead and run this down and see what happens. All right, so that got a decent amount. Hopefully you can see that. But it still looks stained, so that's good. I think that'll be a good amount to stack another layer on top of it. So next up, I'm going to just continue what I did last time. Take a clean one, run it up and down, really get the last of that remaining ink that's kind of sitting on the top off. And then we'll move forward with the second layer. All right, so now we are ready for coat number two. I think what I'm going to try this time is just soaking one of these, um, I don't even know what you call them, cotton rounds in the Indie ink and applying it that way just to see if I can be a bit more even with the coating. Overall, it looks pretty good, but um, there were a couple areas that I felt like I had to go over with the damp um, cotton rag a little bit more to get it more even with the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and we'll see what happens. And also, I should note that 
Um, with the damp rag, it really came right off the binding, any of the ink that was left on the binding that dried. So I'm not really concerned about that anymore and being super precise because I feel like I can just go right along it and get it off. No problem. So that's the plan. Let's uh, give it a shot. All right, there we go. Still having some issues with it soaking in in this one little spot. I did sand it a little bit more, but that didn't seem to help much. So I might go back and sand that just a touch more and apply some more ink to that fret specifically. But otherwise, it looks like it all soaked in pretty well and is drying pretty fast. All right, so that's all on there looking pretty good. I did sand and redo this fret a little bit to make it more even. And it does look like the... Um, ink took better after I did that. So we'll check back on that. Might have to do it one more time because I did sand a decent amount. And uh, everything else looks pretty even so far. I'm gonna take a clean one and get it a little damp and run it along the edges just to clear up some of that ink. And then we'll uh, come back in a few hours and see how things are looking. All right, we are coming back to it a few hours later. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did before. Take one of these, get it damp, and try and take off any of the excess ink. And we'll see what we're left with after that. All right, let's do it. All right, so this is looking pretty good now. However, it's definitely not staining and looking the same as the Epiphone did. Uh, it just doesn't have as deep or rich of a color, even though uh, this fretboard was darker than the Epiphone. Uh, was just as a raw piece of wood. So it's a little interesting, but I guess to be expected, wood will stain differently. So I'm kind of thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little test here on the very last fret. And I'm gonna try what I've seen some people talk about online, which is taking the Minwax uh, Ebony pen and layering it on top of the India ink as the base. So I'm gonna try that here just because you don't really notice that, and I can probably fix that pretty easily if it doesn't come out very well. Uh, but to start, I'm going to go ahead and lightly sand it with some 600 grit and, uh, yeah, put on a layer of this and see what happens. So let's try that. So I just did one quick little test layer on there and then quickly wiped it off just to see if it made any difference. It definitely brought some life back into the board. It looks a little gray right now, so I think I'm going to go ahead and move forward with doing it. Uh, all across the fretboard, but I'm going to do probably like one coat, let it sit for a few minutes, then lightly wipe it. And then uh, I'll probably let it sit for maybe, I don't know, an hour. And then I'll do that a few times until visually I like the way it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward with that. And all the while, I'm also going to just lightly resand with some 600 grit just to make sure it's got something to grab onto. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so went through and sanded everything with 600 grit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up with some of these rags just to make sure there's nothing else on it. I don't wanna use naphtha because I'm not sure how the um, ink is gonna react to that yet. So I'm just gonna clean it up like this and then we will hit it with some of that uh, ebony stain marker. So what I think I'm gonna do is go four frets and then wipe it off. I don't want it to sit on there too long because in my experience with the other fretboard, this got kind of gummy. So I think if I uh, just have it sit on there for maybe a minute or so each, then remove it, I should be okay. So I'm gonna try that. All right, so I'm not sure if you guys can actually see the difference between just the Indie ink and then this stacked on. So I'm gonna get the camera and try and show you guys a close up. So this is just the India ink on its own. Looks okay, looks kind of dry and gray. And then if we move over, this is all with the first coat of the Minwax pen on top. And it definitely gives it more of a, I would say a rich, look in comparison. Um, let me see if I can kind of get an angle here to show what I mean. 
So kind of use the marker. So this side has the ebony uh, stain marker on it. This side is just India ink. So it definitely makes it look a bit more vibrant and maybe a touch darker, not that much darker though. So I'm gonna go ahead so we get some different lighting here. So you can tell the uh, color difference a bit more from this angle. So it definitely makes it a richer color. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this first layer, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then go ahead and apply as many more layers as I think it needs. But uh, one thing's for sure, I was not sure if this would go full on ebony, like really dark black. And uh, this is definitely not gonna do that. So for better or worse, uh, it seems to be, regardless of what I do, it's always going to have some of these kind of streaks in it. So it kind of is the character of the wood, but at least it's darker. That's kind of my main goal. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not really looking for this to be straight up ebony black. Uh, I just want it to be more contrasty next to the gold top. So let me put the camera back and I will continue on with the rest of the frets. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to just let it sit here and set just a little bit longer. I mean, it's dry, I'm running the towel on it. it doesn't seem like it's really picking up anything. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let it sit a little bit longer and then I'm just gonna repeat the process probably at least another two times and we should be there. But it's already looking much better uh, than it was before. It definitely looks significantly just more healthy, I would say the board. It just looks a lot more vibrant. Uh, it's not as dark as I was expecting. That's okay. Maybe it'll get darker as we add more of this. Not sure, um, but it definitely looks better. So that the end goal was for it to look better, not for it to look like ebony because it's not a custom, so it shouldn't have ebony. Um, but yeah, I think it's going pretty good so far. So we'll let this sit for a little bit, maybe another 30 minutes or so, and then I'll come back and add another layer. Time for round two with the Minwax pen. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as last time, except for I think I'm gonna go all the way down and then start removing. So instead of doing like sets of four or five, I'm gonna go all the way, uh, just so it has a bit more time to set on the wood. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we've got it all on there, looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start lightly wiping it off from left to right, or I guess right to left for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's see how it comes off and we got any darker of a shade this time around. So let's try that. Still wiping off pretty easily. I'm not sure it really looks darker to be honest, maybe just a bit richer. Hard to tell. It's certainly not black. It still very much looks kind of fairly light, streaky brown, which is, again, surprising to me. Um, you know, people use this to quote unquote ebonize their fretboards, and uh, it's definitely not ebonizing this fretboard. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is let it sit on here. I'm gonna put it, reapply it to this first fret, and uh, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit to see if that gets it to soak in more. Again, very surprising. Definitely not um, behaving in the same way as it did on the Epiphone. So maybe that really wasn't worth all the time and effort to test, but yeah, we'll just let this sit and come back to it. All right, it's now been just about maybe 18 hours since I put on the layer of ebony stain from Minwax. You can see there's still quite a bit on top. Some of it has dried though, but definitely still soaking in. Get some different lighting so you can see a bit more. It's dried more here. From what's dried, it looks darker, which is good. So now the real question is whether I want to 
Go ahead and start wiping this off and applying another layer and letting that sit for another 24 hours. Or if I just let this layer sit, uh, I'm really curious how well this is gonna come off. Again, based off of my initial testing with the Epiphone, uh, this stuff really started to get tacky as I let it sit for more than 24 hours. So I don't know, but this wood is definitely behaving very different to what the Epiphone did. So not sure yet, but I'm gonna look at it a little bit closer with the naked eye and then make a decision. I'm gonna do a little test here on these end frets and see how it's looking. A little bit's coming off, not too bad. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and run it through and then um, I kinda wanna see what it looks like outside in natural light to get a better sense of exactly how dark it is. It's, this is very, obviously I'm in a garage right now, so there's not much natural light to reference and the light I do have is um, yeah, just not very representative of what it'll actually look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and lightly rub off everything and we'll see what we're dealing with. It's definitely starting to feel a little tacky, which is the issue I had with the Epiphone. So I think it's probably best to not let it totally sit for any longer. As a reminder, I do have tape over all of the inlays, so that's why I wasn't very careful about outlining them since I figured I would, uh, I can just peel the tape off and they should be fine under that. And anything that did uh, carry over, I can probably remove pretty easily. So you can see the uh, inlay. I just took the tape off and uh, how bright and shiny it is. <laughs> and uh, had a little bit on the corners that uh, stopped being protected, but it seemed to just rub right off. So no big deal there. I mean, just looking at it right now in the light, it's definitely not black. It's definitely not like too dark. Uh, I would say this looks kind of more what I would have expected the guitar to come with. Now the binding edges are kind of, they look dirty and uh, I can certainly clean that up and I probably will, but honestly, I kind of like the look a little bit. I know this is gonna be slightly controversial, but I mean, it's a relic guitar. Um, it was lightly aged from the factory. I've aged it quite a bit myself. The guitar is just aging naturally um, and I actually kind of dig the look of it looking kind of dirty because the rest of the guitar is dirty. So that's one thing that always bothered me about Relic guitars is they never actually age a Relic, the, the fretboard, the binding, that kind of area. So I actually don't think it looks too bad. It just looks kind of dirty, which if you have a vintage, vintage guitar, um, they can look like that. So we'll decide later what I wanna do with that, but so far, looking okay. You can see how much I've taken off too. So this is all what just uh, didn't soak in, just kind of sitting on the surface. It just gets very tacky over time. So I think if I were to do another layer, I'll put it on, maybe let it sit for 30 minutes and then wipe it off and just do it that way and slowly build it up versus letting one thick layer just sit there for 24 hours. All right, wow, there's a lot of elbow grease to do that. Let's see how much I took off. Front and back on that rag, that rag is toast. So now I'm gonna wipe it down with a uh, another clean rag and then we'll take it outside and see what it looks like. Alrighty, so just trying to knock back a little bit on this and make it ready for a second 
coat. I think I'm gonna do the whole thing one more time, maybe two more times, but lighter this this uh, time around. I'm only gonna let it soak on there for a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, we should be more or less good to go. And then after that, I'm gonna have to uh, basically just polish the frets all over again. I'll have to pick up some uh, polishing compound to use with the Dremel to get these kind of nice and shiny. And uh, yeah, I think we should be good to go. All right, so I did another layer and I laid it on really thick. I went back and forth multiple times. I tried to just kind of really get it on there and see if it would stick or not. So I'm gonna let it sit for uh, maybe 15 minutes or so and then come back, we'll wipe it off and see if that made any difference. All right, so I've waited about 30 minutes. So we'll go ahead and wipe away the excess now and kind of see what we are left with. Well, first glance, honestly, it just seems to not want to take on any more stain. Doesn't look any really blacker or more even. Still see the streaks really well. So I think kind of, it is what it is. I think there's really no going beyond where it is now. Um, at least with what I know currently. So yeah, kind of interesting. Not at all what I was expecting. Uh, this is not how I anticipated this going. But that's why you film it and you do it and you find out. I really thought it would go on more, honestly. I, I was expecting these because these two first frets are really the first four, kind of the lightest part of the entire guitar. And uh, I was hoping that these would get darker doing another layer. I even, you guys saw I did, you know, double, triple layers of the stain on it, but it really didn't seem to matter at all. I think that's as good as she's gonna get. Last but not least, we have applying F1 oil fretboard conditioner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this white rag, rub it in, and let's see if it soaks in at all. I'm probably gonna leave it for at least a day, if not more, to really soak in before buffing off. But yeah, we're nearly there. All right, so we will let that soak in. Okay, so I'm coming to you guys about three weeks later. I started and then stopped because I had a pretty major project, uh, which was the 1965 Vibrolex Reverb restoration project. So I wanted to see that one all the way through before finishing this one up, but it actually worked out because it gave me some additional time to really you know, let the stain sink in and then also just play the guitar and see if there were any side effects to it. So I'll get into that in a second, but first let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, the before and after was just on a couple different angles out in the bright sunlight. So my final thoughts, what are they? Well, I'm pleased. I think it came out really good. It looks very healthy. It looks natural. It's not too dark. I do wish it did get a little bit darker, but it just seemed to hit a, a brick wall for some reason. Don't know why that is. I was actually worried it would overstain, but uh, the end result ended up being, you know, this kind of more chocolatey brown, slightly darker, but definitely not black or ebony. Not sure why that was my experience. I know other people have been able to get their boards to look like ebony doing more or less the same process, but hey, I showed every step of the way, so maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. Either way, I'm really pleased with how it came out. Uh, I have played the guitar quite a bit, and um, yeah, even sweaty, because it's been so hot, we're in the summer now, and I haven't had any black get off on my fingertips, which is fantastic. 
I was a little worried about that, uh, although I thought it would just kind of happen in the beginning and then go away, but I've not had any of that so far, which is awesome. So it seems to be pretty durable. I will say that after I let the oil soak in for about a day, um, I just kind of let the guitar sit for probably about a week. I even put it out in the sun a little bit to just kind of bake, if you will. And uh, I don't know how much of an effect that had on things, but it seems rock solid. Nothing comes off, even if I rub my fingers against it. Everything uh, looks great. And in person, it actually looks really good too. Like I said, it looks very healthy and doesn't look like I you know, artificially stained it. So there you go. Uh, would I recommend you doing this? Well, it was a lot of work, especially if you wanna do it right and do all the prep. Um, I think the prep is really important, but yeah, it was a lot of work. So would I recommend doing it? If you're like me and you have a guitar you love, which I love this guitar, and there's one thing that really bothers you, which was the fretboard on this guitar, then yeah, I think go for it. But uh, take your time and uh, it should, should come out okay. But there you go. I just wanted to take you guys along with me as I kind of tried this out for myself. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or just wanna let me know what you think, Drop in the comments below, give a thumbs up, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you guys.